Welcome to Tactical Command USA. If you want the best analysis of modern military power, hit that subscribe button and join the ranks. Today, we're breaking down a mission that is equal parts mind-blowing logistics and sheer courage. A high altitude. The aircraft for the job? The US Air Force's workhorse, the C-17 Globemaster III. But the challenge isn't just the weight, it's where they have to deliver it. The crew must fly a precise route, navigating potential ground threats. In the cargo bay, loadmasters perform final checks on dozens of container delivery systems, or CDS bundles. This is a high altitude, high speed drop. They're too high to see the target, and they're moving at over 300 knots. The ramp and door are opened, exposing the cargo bay to the 25,000 foot altitude. The crew is now on oxygen. Green light! Green light! The pilots have hit the precisely calculated drop point. The loadmasters engage the aerial delivery system. The locks release. And the first pallet is out. A small extraction chute deploys, pulling the main canopy. But this is what's mind-blowing. The system doesn't drop just one. It drops all 40 in a single pass. In less than 30 seconds, over 55,000 pounds of aid has left the aircraft. And this is the result. A perfect stick of cargo, all deploying simultaneously. This is precision. On the ground, in this war-torn region, thousands of people are cut off from basic supplies. For them, this high-altitude drop is, quite literally, a delivery from heaven. The pallets are designed to withstand the impact, protecting the fragile medical supplies and food inside. In one pass, this C-17 crew delivered an entire hospital's worth of medicine and tons of food, all without ever being seen. Pre-positioned ground teams move in to secure and distribute the aid immediately. For the air crew, the mission is a success. They are already on their way home. A mind-blowing display of capability, used not for destruction, but for preservation. A true test. What military hardware should we analyze next? Let us know in the comments. This is Tactical Command, signing off. But how is a drop of that precision and scale even possible? It comes down to three things, the platform, the people, and the procedure. First, the platform. The C-17 is powered by four Pratt & Whitney engines, each providing over 40,000 pounds of thrust. But the precision comes from the cockpit. Unlike older aircraft, the C-17 uses a fly-by-wire system and a joystick, more like a fighter jet. The pilots use a head-up display and a CARP, or computed air release point. The computer calculates the exact- But the tech is useless without the team. Enter the loadmaster. They are the masters of the cargo bay, responsible for everything in the back. Their job starts hours before takeoff. They calculate the precise weight and balance, rig the parachutes, and lock them. During the drop, they operate the system. One mistake, a bad rig, a jammed lock, and the mission fails, or worse, endangers the aircraft. This is the key. The C-17's floor has a rail system with electronic locks. When the loadmaster hits release, the locks disengage in sequence using the aircraft's nose-high attitude to slide all 40 pallets out in seconds. That is how you get the string of pearls. And the C-17 doesn't just drop cargo, its primary role is often delivering soldiers. It can carry 102 combat-equipped paratroopers. In a mass tac drop, paratroopers exit both side doors at the same time. This is how the 82nd Airborne deploys, an army from the sky. But the C-17 is, above all, a hauler. Its cargo bay is 88 feet long. It's or three Apache helicopters. Or a combination of Bradleys and Humvees. This is strategic airlift, moving an army any- But its most powerful mission may be this. Aeromedical evacuation, or medvac. The C-17- It can carry dozens of critically wounded soldiers, complete with life support systems, flying them from the battlefield directly to advanced hospitals. Its systems can even maintain sea level cabin pressure at high altitude, protecting patients with lung or brain injuries. It saves lives. From a 70 ton tank to a critically injured soldier, 
From 40 pallets of food to 100 paratroopers, the C-17 can carry it all. And it all relies on the skill of the crews who train relentlessly to master one of the most complex and capable aircraft ever. So how does it fit in the fleet? You might ask about the C-5 Galaxy. The C-5 is a strategic airlifter. It carries more. But it is restricted to long, reinforced runways. It cannot get to the fight or the disaster zone. On the other end, you have the C-130 Hercules. It's a tactical workhorse. It can land almost anywhere. But it lacks the range and payload. It can't fly a tank from the US to the Middle East. It just doesn't have the legs. The C-17 is the strategic tactical hybrid. It has the intercontinental range of the C-5, but the short field toughness of the C-130. It is the only aircraft that can pick up 40 pallets of food in Germany, fly 2,000 miles, and drop it with pinpoint accuracy in a war zone, all without landing. That is its mind-blowing capability. The C-17 Globemaster III is more than a cargo plane. It is a symbol of global reach, but it is a lifeline, a symbol of hope delivered from 25,000 feet. The C-17 has been used in every major conflict and disaster relief operation for 30 years. What is its- The C-17's unparalleled capability isn't just for the US Air Force. Its strength is trusted by key allies around the globe. The UK's Royal Air Force was the first international customer, using their C-17s to support operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. The Royal Australian Air Force relies on its fleet for power projection and vital disaster relief across the vast Pacific region. India uses its C-17s to move troops and supplies to challenging, high-altitude border regions, a feat few other aircraft can perform. Even NATO operates a shared fleet, allowing multiple nations to pool resources for joint strategic missions. But its true legacy is written in the pages of history. When disaster strikes, the C-17 is almost always the first on the scene. After Hurricane Katrina, C-17s became a lifeline, evacuating thousands of stranded residents and flying in time. When the 2011 tsunami devastated Japan, C-17s landed on damaged airfields to deliver rescue equipment and search teams. But no mission defines the C-17 more than the 2021 evacuation of Kabul. It was a mission of desperation, courage, and sheer chaos. With the airport overrun, crews were forced to make impossible choices. The C-17 became the only way out. In one of the most famous flights, callsign Reach 871, the crew was faced with a panicked crowd flooding the cargo bay. This is the result. This is what 823 people look like inside a C-17. The official load limit is 102 paratroopers. And this wasn't just one flight. For two weeks, C-17 crews flew 24-7, landing under threat of attack, packing their jets. And this wasn't just one flight. For two weeks, C-17 crews flew 24-7, landing under threat of attack, packing their jets. And evacuating 124,000 people. It was the largest non-combatant evacuation in US history, and it was done on the back of the C-17. From a high altitude humanitarian drop to a desperate last minute rescue. From a 70 ton tank to 800 human souls. The C-17 Globemaster III is not just a masterpiece of engineering. It is a symbol of strength, flexibility. If you enjoyed this deep dive, do your duty. Hit that like button and subscribe to Tactical Command USA for more content just like this. And let us know in the comments, what other mind-blowing military hardware should we analyze next? The F-22? The B-2 Spirit? This is Tactical Command USA. Dismissed. But wait, before you're dismissed, there is one more C-17 mission. One that isn't talked about. We're talking about the Tennessee and Kurt. AFOC crews are trained for a different mission, clandestine infiltration and exfiltration. They fly lower, faster, and in total darkness. These pilots fly entirely on goggles. The C-17's cockpit and HUD are specifically designed to be compatible with NVGs, preventing the pilots from being blinded. Their specialty? A blacked out assault landing. They land this 300,000 pound jet on an Loadmasters, also on NVGs, have the ramp open before the plane even stops. 
The goal is wheels down, target out in under 60 seconds. They're not just dropping operators, they're dropping their vehicles. A fully armed SOCOM team can drive off a C-17 and be on target in minutes. This allows special ops teams to strike hundreds of miles deeper than normally possible, using the C-17 as a temporary mobile base. And then there's personnel. The C-17 is the preferred platform for HAHO and HALO jumps. High altitude, high opening. High altitude, low opening. In a HAO jump, operators exit at 30,000 feet and glide for miles, crossing borders undetected. The C-17 flies a normal, commercial flight path, appearing as a simple airliner while deploying a full assault team from 30 miles away. It's not just land either. AFSOC C-17s are modified to airdrop hard duck combat boats. They can drop a full SEAL team and their boat, allowing them to conduct a maritime raid from thousands of miles away. In the world of special operations, the C-17 is the ultimate ace in the hole. A heavy lifter that can move with the speed and stealth of a ghost. So, with this incredible record, What's next? Well, here's the hard fact. The C-17 is no longer in production. This means the 270 plus C-17s in service are now a legacy fleet. They must be meticulously maintained. But the Air Force is already looking for its replacement. The program is called Next Generation Airlift. Obligas. But that replacement is decades away. For now, and for the foreseeable future, the C-17 It is a tactical warrior, a strategic hauler, and a humanitarian guardian. It is the one aircraft that can do it all, combining the range of a giant with the footprint of a tactical airlifter. A truly mind-blowing machine, and a testament to the crews who fly it. If you believe this content is vital, join the command, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell. Check out these other deep dives, and let us know in the comments, what is the C-17's most impressive mission? This is Tactical Command USA. Dismissed. Welcome back to Tactical Command USA. If you want the truth about the world's most secret and expensive aircraft, hit that subscribe button. Today, we are analyzing the most feared and misunderstood weapon in the US arsenal. The B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber. This is a $2.1 billion aircraft. That's not a typo. And we are going to show you why. The B-2 is not a plane. It's a ghost. Its flying wing design is built for one purpose, to be invisible to enemy radar. No vertical tail, no fuselage. Every single surface is precisely angled to deflect radar signals away from their source. But the shape is only half the story. The skin is a top secret radar absorbent material, or RAM. Its mission, first night, to fly undetected thousands of miles and take out the enemy's most protected targets, their command centers and air defenses. It is the door kicker. It can carry 80 500-pound precision bombs or two massive 30,000-pound bunker busters. This is the GBU-57. It can penetrate 200 feet of concrete before it explodes. The B-2 is the only plane that can carry it. End. It's the stealth leg of America's nuclear triad. The B-2 was designed to deliver nuclear weapons. But how does it get there? The B-2 has an unrefueled range of 6,000 nautical miles. And with aerial refueling, its range is unlimited. A B-2 crew can take off from Missouri, strike anywhere on Earth, and fly home. These missions are marathons. We're talking 30, even 40 hours. So... How do the pilots survive? It's just a two-person crew, a pilot and a mission commander. 
They trade off flying, navigating, and managing the weapon systems. The cockpit is pressurized so they can take off their masks. There's a small space behind them with a cot, a chemical toilet, and a microwave. One pilot can take a nap while the other flies. They live inside this $2 billion weapon for almost two days straight. And look at the gear. They wear full pressure suits, just like a U-2 pilot. That's because the B-2 flies at 50,000 feet. At that altitude, it's above most weather and many fighter jets. It's another layer of protection on top of its radar stealth. But what about heat-seeking missiles? The B-2's engines are buried deep inside the wing. Its exhaust is cooled before it's released. But what about heat-seeking missiles? The B-2's engines are buried deep inside the wing. Its exhaust is cooled before it's released. Invented over the top of the wing, mixing it with the cold upper atmosphere. This makes its heat signature almost invisible from the ground. The B-2 proved its worth in 1999 over Kosovo. It flew 30-hour non-missions from missions from... After 9-11, a B-2 flew the longest combat bombing mission.